Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk once again about 3D printing as just last month I was contacted by Gearbest. Um, they offered me basically a 3D printer in exchange for a review and as they really did not ask me for anything beyond that, meaning that I'm pretty much free to say whatever I want in this video, uh, I gladly accepted this opportunity to get my hands onto a 3D printer as it will allow me to do a lot more in the whole 3D uh, you know, character design kind of things, and it, I think it will allow me to do some more exciting videos in the future as well. However, for this video, I just want to introduce the 3D printer to you, uh, tell you quite honestly what I think is good and what I think is bad about it. So let's get started. First of all, I want to give you some very basic information about this product. The maker being Creality, this machine is among 12 other printers that they have in their lineup. And Creality actually happens to be one of the more popular makers out there. They're especially popular for their low prices, they're uh, still fairly good quality, and their other products actually have quite a large build volume as well. So those are the things that you usually hear in connection to this maker. Uh, speaking about the low price, this machine goes for currently around 175 US dollars, which really makes it quite a cheap machine. The previous one that I had, the Micro 3D, maybe you know it, it really wasn't a great printer in first place, but it still cost, I think, around 300 US dollars, and it's not comparable at all in quality, but we'll get to that later. Uh, as for the specs on the website which I visited, it is advertised to have a build volume of 150 by 150 by 200 millimeters, a maximum print speed of 200 millimeters per second, and an accuracy of plus minus 0.1 millimeter. Oh, also, if you want to know about the nozzle diameter, that's uh, 0.4 millimeter. However, numbers alone can be quite misleading, I believe, as I know there can be a lot going wrong here. So. I will tell you next what I think about this machine in real life performance. Now let us get into the fun part of this video then, which is to compare a few prints that I made. I challenged myself to get the highest quality print out of this print possible, and that is mostly connected to layer height and um, the retraction settings. You'll see in a second why. So on this first print that I showed you, I used the layer height of 0.2 millimeters, and you can see very strong uh, errors where the retraction settings were not tuned properly. You can see the point on almost every layer somewhere where the extrusion process starts and stops. So I changed the settings to, on the one hand, make thinner layers, and on the other hand, to stop extrusion process um, like a fraction of a millimeter before it reaches the end and also not to start immediately on the next layer. Now the next print that I can show you from that is this one here and you can see that in comparison especially the, this, the surface is just becoming amazingly smooth at this point. You can also see that I still haven't figured out the retraction settings perfectly as there are still dots here and there like sticking out of the surface. And with this being now 0.1 millimeter, that is already the, the smallest uh, advertised layer height. This is the smallest thing that they say will work on this printer uh, from the company's perspective. However, I thought uh, that it would be fun to go even further. And so I changed the settings, I tuned everything once again, and I actually went down to 0.08 millimeters just to see what would happen. And look at this final print here. I mean, it's just amazing how smooth it is. When you move your finger across the surface, you can barely even feel the layers. And and I have to say, you run into troubles. There is, it is very easy to make this print um, kind of lose integrity by kind of, the, the surface will open up pretty much. And it can really only print if there is a solid layer underneath. So. I had to really work very strongly with infills and solid layers, uh, starting like 40, 40 layers underneath a surface that is on top to make this work. However, the result is just astonishing. And you can see my fingers for comparison of size there. With this, I actually think that this printer is able to be useful for art. This is a finish that is totally, yeah, like you can work with something like that. Finally, I'll talk about the hardware. 
This print arrives in a kit, which means that you have to assemble it by yourself. Luckily, they do provide all necessary tools like screwdrivers and that sort of thing in the box. And if just the instructions were a little bit better, I would call it a fun and maybe educative challenge, however. I did run into quite a few issues myself, and but I'll talk about that a bit later. Otherwise, once you have it all put together, you'll find yourself with a very sturdy setup that pretty much just works. In particular, I like how they include this computer, this onboard machine that allows you to control the 3D printer in standalone mode. So if anything goes wrong or you just want to maybe load a new filament, you just uh, push a few buttons and you're good to go. Another benefit that comes from this one being one of the more popular 3D printers is the large user base online. No matter what troubles you run into, you are very likely to find a solution online. And me, myself, I made use of that a lot, so I really think that's an important thing to consider. Now, what about the downsides and the negative aspects? When my kit arri arrived, I was really excited to assemble it right away, but then I realized that actually they forgot to put in one of the most es essential screwdrivers, uh, which meant that I could actually not assemble it at all. It didn't bother me too much because I just waited for a couple of days and I got, like, a set of screwdrivers that I bought on Amazon. However, I can imagine that it bothers others and it kind of raises concern regarding the production quality. Um, next, I mentioned that I mentioned it already, but the instructions really weren't the best. Uh, there were about five or six pictures and that's pretty much it. That's all the instructions that you get, which really isn't sufficient in my opinion. And again, I had to to turn towards other users online to find solutions for many of those issues. Uh, one issue in particular that I had that was very confusing, which I was stuck with for two weeks, was a print the print pad, which was kind of shaky and was wobbly and just not stable. Uh, I thought already that there was a manufacturing mistake and I kind of planned to, plan to position that as kind of not the best quality. However, it turned out that one of the nuts that is used to keep this printing bed in place actually functions as an adjusting mechanism. So if you turn, it's, it's called an eccentric nut, I think, where when you turn it, you kind of shift the axis and then you can kind of tension um, how, the, how the whole, the wheels sit on the rail. And so, well, in conclusion, this printer turned out to be kind of quite an experience with lots of ups and downs. Now, what do I think about this printer then as a whole? Personally, I really like it. I think it's absolutely worth it. Um, I have not really seen any printer cheaper that could do anything on this sort of level or better. It still gives you a decent quality, you know, if you just look for a printer that's entry level or a hobby machine, I think you should go and give it a try. After all, as I mentioned at the beginning, it's just something about 175 US dollars. And I think if you really need high quality parts, uh, you still have the option to, to turn to companies and you know order the parts at Shapeways or whatever. And you know, as you have a lot to learn and not so much to lose. For me personally, this printer would be quite a good choice. Now, this concludes my review on the Ender 2 by Creality. I hope you found the information useful. If you're interested, feel free to learn more at the link in the description. Thank you once again to Gearbest for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you all next time.